Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Naked CTF. In this series, I'll attempt to compromise and own a server from Hack the Box. I've not... This is my first attempt. I've not solved it beforehand or read anything about it. It's one take with no editing, so this could be 30 minutes or three hours. Let's go. Today we are doing Busqueda? Buscuda? Not quite sure how to pronounce that, but anyway, we've just... Uh, launched it so let's get started we'll do our setup as always uh ctf prep and it's gonna be the name of the box which is that let's make it lowercase and grab the ip address there it is and that sets up my tmux environment etc etc now also creates my notes there it is and didn't want to do that but that's okay um let's just grab the other notes in case we need it unorganized notes always good to have around and we'll start off with our <clears throat> basic recon make this turn a little bit bigger for you and off it goes so yeah still working along the uh, oscp pathway it's a pathway that i've kind of built myself um will follow a pathway that's um commonly kind of accepted um <clears throat> in the you know the broader community i think uh one's called tj null's uh recommendation in terms of a list of boxes to complete on hack the box and uh try hack me so uh we'll get to that eventually it is slow going at the moment i do have a lot of uh, stuff going on in my uh professional and personal life Got family and all that sort of thing to look after. Um, so, yeah, trying to do it as much as I can. At least a couple of boxes a week, and uh, we'll go from there. So, our initial recon states that we have port 22 SSH and port 80 TCP open. So, 22 TCP SSH, we'll just leave this for now until we develop develop some credentials okay and then we've got port 80 which we're assuming is http and we can see here it did not follow the redirect to searcher.htb so if we try to go to the ip address here uh it's likely that it's going to fail on the redirect yeah because it's redirecting to searcher.htb so we will simply do um let's see here Got a little add hosts and then we're going to do IP and searcher.hdb. Okay, now if we ping searcher. searcher.hdb, there we go. Now resolves to my host file. And let's try that again. Okay, so now we have the website. Open up the page source, make this a bit bigger for you. Searcher, search anything with Searcher. The capabilities range from social media platforms to encyclopedias, to Q&A sites, and much, much more. Choose from our huge collection of search engines, including YouTube, Google, DuckDuckGo, eBay, and various other platforms, etc., etc. With our search engine, you can monitor all public social mentions across social networks and the web. This allows you quickly... Okay, all right, marketing. To start, simply select the search engine you want to use, type the query you want to be searched. Finally, hit the search button to submit the query. If you want to get redirected automatically, you can tick the checkbox. Otherwise, you'll be then you will be automatically redirected to the selected search engine. Otherwise, you will get the URL of your search, which you can use however you wish. Select your search engine. Well, it's quite a list there. Let's just go with Google. What are we searching for? Um, let's see. Um, hack the box. And let's try it without the auto redirect. So if we hit search. We get a post, I assume it's a form post, and then we get this URL back, which is a Google URL that points to hack the box, as we expect. And if we do auto redirect, okay, same thing, except it'll automatically redirect us. Very cool. Now, <clears throat> Let's have a start off with a quick uh, look through the source code of the homepage. A bit too big. So bring in a bunch of boilerplate, Ajax, uh, that sort of thing. Bit of good old bootstrap. 
and some CSS, inline CSS, nothing exciting there. Here's all the text we just quickly sped through. And then this is the form action. So it's posting to slash search. Then we've got the form itself with all the options, quite a long list there uh, of all the different uh, search engines available. What do you want to search for? Then it's the actual query that you want to submit. And then the auto redirect, etc. This is highlighted red because there's probably not a closing tag. Oh, there is a closing tag. Um, not quite sure. Maybe it's not a, maybe footer isn't a valid HTML tag. Um, okay. So then we have what's visible down here at the bottom, like the social media links, etc. And if we look on here, we can just see they don't actually go anywhere. They just reference a anchor tag, which is just, it'll take you to the top of the same page. So nothing really there. Uh, powered by Flask. Okay, well, we know Flask is a Python framework. And search, search or 240, which has got a link to a GitHub project. So we definitely want to take a look at that. Maybe not the source code view. But I would guess that search or is providing this logic, um, like the list of search engines and formatting the query um, into a URL that's usable um, because each one of these is going to have a slightly different query string. Like Google is um, going to have a different one to say AccuWeather or AOL. So this is probably a um, <clears throat> Python library or pip module or whatever it is that helps with searching. Quick and easy searching tasks in one library. Searcher is an all-in-one PyPy Python library. Simplifies web scraping, obtaining information on a topic and generating search query URLs. Okay, that's definitely what it's doing here. Um, efficient tool for Python developers, etc., etc. So this is how it's installed. Yeah, pip install. Uh, this is how you grab a uh, query string, a query URL. So it knows that for Google, the uh, path is google.com slash search, and then the get parameter Q equals and then URL encoded value. Okay. Very nice. And looks like it's kind of under, oh, okay. 27 releases, last one, February 23. Let's just make some notes before we start. Um, simple web application that appears to be based on Flask framework. Um, uses a pip by by module called Searchor. Pretty cool name. Let's just stick that in there. Um, <clears throat> we might as well capture a quest just to see what that looks like. Uh, again, I'm going to go with Google because I know that best. HDB. We'll hit search. And then if we go over to, let's just get rid of these ones. Delete. Okay, so real, real simple. Very simple form data, and this is what gets returned, okay? So we'll grab that uh, post header. So we've got some information about what version of Python and everything else is we're working with in the, in the web app. And okay, so I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is that, um, is there a CVE in either Flask or Search or uh, the version that's running here, right? Um, and I know Flask is a pretty, 
um, big project with a lot of eyeballs on it and um, it has many, many frequent releases. So I'm going to start with search or so what I might do just as a first step, super simple um, search exploit. We're getting meta here using search to search or search or search or okay. Mm. Search or CVE. Oops, we disable our proxy. Exploit for search or 240 arbitrary command injection. And it just so happens that we are using 240. Wonderful. So we'll put this in our notes. And we're going to attempt search her before 242 uses eval on CLI put CLI input. <laughs> kind of like one of those <clears throat> application security 101 things. Yeah, you really eval is just super dangerous so if we look at the code snippet from uh main.py url equals eval and then it tries to do a substitution um for oh my goodness mm. okay so i can see why that would allow us to do a Uh, command injection so hopefully everything is aligned and we can actually exploit this so let's have a look at the exploit code do a quick read through it before we run some untrusted code on our machine here okay so default port rev shell base 64 so it even gives you a <laughs> uh base 64 encoded one liner bash reverse shell and then it sets up payload import os dot, uh, dot system and then puts it all together does some wrangling to swap spaces with pluses or pluses with with uh url encoded characters okay um yeah, I mean, it's a bash script. That's pretty cool. You don't see exploit code. Um, so we'll just call this vim search or two four zero exploit dot sh. Paste all that in there. Get it all pasted correctly. Search mod plus x search or search or and then we do target which is going to be uh searcher.htb and then it's going to be the attacker so that's my ip 10 10 14.30 the port that i want to come back on i guess so I'll just create a new window and we'll run netcat. So we got a listener running and boom, man, that was super easy. A little too easy. Um, okay. Let's just make this a bit, uh, more organized, make that a little bit smaller. So, ID, foothold, let's grab the exploit code that we used, exploit for search or successful, 
And now we are this guy. So maybe it's just worth doing some basic enum while we're here, just to get a little bit of a sense of where we're at. Uh, one thing I will do is actually kill this reverse shell and then I will go into bash. Then I will start my listener again. And then I will run the exploit code again. And this should let us, oops, Python 3 minus C import pty pty.spawn in bash that. Okay, just trying to get a better shell going. Foreground. Export shell equals bash. Export term equals x term 256. Color. And STTY rows. Then we want to do. We want to do. Hmm. Ah, I think that'll be good for now. Right. Okay. It's a slightly stable, stabler shell. Um, yeah, I've just got some of these basic, um, post exploitation, um, uh, steps that I've documented. So I'll grab these so we can instantly see at a glance what we're looking at or well, what's available. And what else? What do we care about? ID we don't. Uname minus A minus M. Always good to have the uh, kernel version. Yep. And architecture. Definitely want to have that just for anything in the future we may need it for. Um, <clears throat> distro, we can probably just do etc issue Ubuntu. Ubuntu 22.04. That old. Mm -mm. Have a look at the environment variables and just all vanilla bash rc stuff that's probably a little bit too verbose that uh, series of commands let's just trim that down a bit and Yeah, okay, I do want to snag all of this. Maybe something useful in here. Sorry that you can't see it. It's just this is the quickest and dirtiest way to copy and paste large amounts of text. Okay, let's make that bigger. So looking through this, there's the one we set, the terminal. Mm. Node app instance. So yeah, I think this is the user that is running the node application, which is I'm assuming Oh, why would it be node? 
wouldn't be nerd, would it? Um. Okay, we got a pass here var www app. Probably would have found that anyway. So SVC is the user. Let's just make a note of this as we go. Local user SVC via rev shell exploit. What else we got? So app.py. So yeah, here's the slash search path that takes a post method. And it will I don't think there's anything really interesting here. Super simple Flask application. Yeah, okay. Then we got templates. Which is just index.html. And that's the static HTML page that we saw, which contains the, the um, form. But what we do see here in the SVC home directory var www app is a .git account. Uh, .git folder, I should say. .git directory. So, interesting. Um, git status. Fatal. Detected dubious ownership in this repository. .git. An exception. Alright, let's do that. It's complaining about something, so we'll just see if we can. Git status. Git. Uh, what's it called? Git log. Okay, so it looks like there's only one commit. Initial commit. And this is the commit hash. So I'm just going to grab all of this. I really like the fact that the uh, terminal colors work. And we've got this new credential base potentially. So administrator. Let's just take the email. Administrator at gitty.searcher.hdb. Now, gitty is like a self hosted GitHub. So, normally, what I would kind of, I mean, we got lucky in that we found an exploit pretty quickly that worked. Um, normally I would say, let's go and do DNS enumeration. Maybe we should. Let's just do it for the fun. Uh, okay. So we're going to do fuff. Then FS1, we'll figure out what that is. HTTP searcher.hdb. Then the host header. Post is going to be fuzz. This is where our dictionary uh, word goes. Searcher.htb. Minus w user share word lists. Sec lists. Discovery. DNS subdomains. Top 1 million. 20,000.txt. Okay. So if we take that full screen. We want to exclude anything because we're just getting 302 redirect for everything, right? So we want to exclude 
Mm. Let's try just filtering on any response that has 10 lines. I think it's FL. Yep. Okay. Interesting. I wonder if Git T is in this list. Oops. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, does it? So, what about a bigger one? There's a partial match. Hmm. Interesting. So have we done subdomain um, enumeration like I normally do? Um, let's just see if it appears anywhere. So name list had it. I never used that one. Name list. Filter 10 lines. Yeah, it just goes to ensure, uh, show the um, importance of not over depending on a particular set of word lists. Like, I'm absolutely guilty of this um, because they do all vary. Um, Gitty is, is a pretty specialist application. Um, and I'll be interested to see if this. Um, fuzzing finds it. Yeah, see, there it goes. So if I just use my normal DNS um, or subdomain enumeration, like I wouldn't have found that. I mean, the good thing is like I found it in um, through recon on the host itself, right? Like I found it in this Git repository here. So I'm going to assume that gitty.searcher.htb is a valid host, so let's um, let's set up res DNS. Uh, let's set up name resolution for that. So I'm just going to do it manually. Uh, oh, sudo. Yeah. Sudo. Uh, 10, 10, 11, 208, gitty.searcher.htb. And then if we go here and we go to http, uh, git, gitty.searcher.htb. Yeah, now we've got a gitty uh, instance. So, no public repositories to users administrator and Cody. So let's just capture that as we go. Cody also possible git t level user. No organizations. Now, interestingly, this is configured with no sign up, only sign in. Uh, by default, I think Gitty would have a, um, allow you to register for like a guest account that gets some basic privileges, maybe not access to particular repos, but this one has got sign in only. So let's continue to dig around um, and figure out what comes next. Hmm, okay, so let's just do some of the basics while we're here. Okay, we don't have the password, so we can't look at sudo. No password less sudo allowed. Um, that's our working directory. So I wonder where gitty is, right? 
So if our www app is the Python Flask application, where is Gitty live? Oh, container D, scripts. Hmm, interesting. So the fact that <clears throat> opt container D exists, that means that possible Docker presence, Docker and container presence, question mark. Um, all of these are owned by root. Yeah, can't touch any of them. All right, now my shell seems to be a little bit unstable. Oh, there we go. So, yes, AUXE. Can't see anything beyond my own user. Okay. So <clears throat> let's do cat etc password grep sh. So SVC looks to be the only kind of real interactive user, and even then, it's not. A person it's more of a service account like it's used to run the python app um if config yeah so the fact that we've got all these kind of funky 17218 um addresses means and these weird kind of uh, interface names definitely smells oh yeah then we've got docker zero okay so definitely um, ContainerD is running and we have some sort of, um, maybe we have, uh, um, info. Yeah, so generally the docker commands need to be run as root because it's connecting via this socket. Um, okay, what next? I'm going to run the P's because I think it's worth just looking at some of the enumeration that it will do. Um, so I'm just going to copy it into my working directory here in P's. Linpeas, Linux, just call that peas. Then we'll run uh, Python, minus m, HTTP.server. And then we'll come over to our victim and we will run wget HTTP colon slash slash and my IP, which is 10, 10, 14.30 for 8,000 peas. Boom, got it. Okay. CH mod plus X, P's. Let's go. So, if I had to guess, I'm going to assume that um, Git is running as a container. Although, how would that work if it's still running on port 80? So gitty.searcher.htb and searcher.htb resolve to the same IP, same port. Mm. So unless, let's go back to a recon. This guy is rewriting, like HTTP is rewriting anything with a gitty host header and then rewriting it, basically proxying it to a different port number. Um, yeah, that's what we'll do next. I mean, we probably should have done it straight away is just run that LAN TP to see if we could 
identify what's running or what's listening at least. But uh, that's Linpeas will do that for us. So um, let's while we're waiting for that, let's just have a quick read through Hack Tricks Docker. Docker breaker. Well, we're not in a container, so we don't necessarily want to do that. Um, Okay, sorry for that diversion. I just had to open the door for someone. Um, Docker security or pen test? Yeah, pen test is probably better. And the peas is finished. So let's scroll back all the way to the beginning. Wow, there's a lot of orange in here. lot of orange maybe i am in a container no i don't think so okay go to the beginning oh my god it's a lot of output Okay. Oh, netcat is available. Nice. So I'm wondering why it's calling this a PE. Writable path abuses. Okay, grab that for later. Environment variables we've already looked at. Um, okay, so there is a bunch of suggested CV exploits. Um, I think we'll come back to that. I like a lot of these are kernel level. Yeah, I see kernel, kernel, dirty pipe. And they're just not guaranteed we could spend like the next three hours like trying to run a bunch of these different uh, exploit a bunch of these uh, cves and not get anywhere so. so we are in a virtual machine yes okay good okay. not on any of the well-known clouds Okay. I mean, these are all just child processes. Yeah, so that's where the web application starts. That's the kind of the parent process. And then that was my request, I think. Yeah, you can see. So my request, the search or made the eval call included uh the base 64 payload which then got passed to the shell and then started the reverse shell and then yeah here we are at peas and this is the moment in time that peas was running this command okay very interesting Maybe not that interesting. Okay. Man, it's going a bit crazy with these paths. Okay, relative paths. Uh, copy link. I've never kind of seen it throw up a high probability on path. But maybe we can abuse the... No. 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. That's what we're here for. That's all the network interfaces. Active ports. So yeah, 5,000, 3,000. So on the public facing side of things, you've got 22, which is SSH. And then port 80, which funnily enough is only listening on the TCP6 interface, not the IPv4. Um, and then I think that's the Docker specific address. I can't quite remember that. I want to grab this. Because I think that'll become useful at some point. Just knowing what's listening where. And. Okay. So root we know. Users with console. So just the SVC account and root. Okay. Nothing exciting there. PHP exec extensions found. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is the uh, virtual host configuration that I was kind of guessing at before. So on port 80, responding to the search.htb command, uh, it's going to reroute to port 5000 locally. So if we go back to our notes, on 5000 is Python. So that's where the Flask application is actually running. It's listening on 5000. And then Apache is doing a rewrite to uh, that internal address. Then it's doing the same for uh, Gitty. Oh bugger. Go back to that. Oh. Yeah. So Git if it matches on gitty.searcher.hb, it reverse proxies to 3000, which is where the Gitty instance is running. Mm, admin at searcher.htb. That's just a generic. Thing. Okay. All right. More reverse uh, proxy config. So, Python website on 5000, Gitty on 3000. Okay. All right. That's cool. Let's keep going through this. No root login permitted on SSH. Mm, Pam, okay, who cares? Mm, cloud init, okay, whatever. Password files, yeah, they all look pretty vanilla. Some Snap applications installed via Snap, which is its own kind of sandboxing. Yeah dot git config. All right, we definitely want to look at this. Cody at searcher.htb. So let's, um, and we've got the second uh, git repo metadata or the git, rep git repository, basically. It's all the metadata that exists about that particular git repository. So we'll hang on to that. GPG, eh. CTR was found in user bin CTR. You may be able to escalate privileges with it. Okay, let's grab this link because that sounds like something we would want to have a poke around. 
Run C, you may be able to escalate. Okay. Copy link. I mean, it's just finding the binaries. It's not, it's not validating that it's uh, an actual vulnerability or some a misconfiguration that can be exploited. DNS files, whatever. Okay. A lot of defaults. All these uh, suid suid root binaries look normal. Mount pseudo password, unmount. Yeah, nothing extraordinary there. Doesn't look like it's anything. Um, anything other than a normal um, default install. Uh, ld.so.conf. Okay. So by default, it includes star.conf. And we have write for ld.so.conf.dlibc.conf. So we could append something to libc.conf, but Yeah, I don't know how to, I've never actually come across this before where you can kind of mess with the libc configuration. So we'll grab that and we'll grab the reference. That kind of looks like the most promising right now. Right privileges over ETC profile. So again, that's interesting, but I don't really know how to mess with it. So ETC profile is gonna be, but I think it's only copied on when a new user is created, like, like that profile file, that ETC profile won't be copied if it already exists in the user's home directory, so. And you could just write to your own local anyway. It'd be good for persistence, but. Um, and then it looks like we have write privileges in etc init d, which is a bit unusual. That should definitely be a root thing. So everything within libsystemd, okay, keep that in mind. Hashes inside passwords, no. So home svc. root files in home does. Oh, we haven't even looked at our like slash home directory. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, a bit of a miss. Because we've just been working out of that um, bar dub 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 app directory, <clears throat> which is what we were dropped into by default because that was the execution context when we got the reverse shell. So again, just seems to be very, very permissive in general, which I wouldn't expect unless there's something glitchy with LinPs, but I don't know, man, it's never steered me wrong before. A lot of stuff. Um, okay. All right. Oh my God. Look at this. We haven't even looked at our home directory yet. Hey, and there's the user flag just sitting there. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. It's uh, attempting to apply regex and um, some funky find commands to, you know, identify anything with credentials or usernames and passwords, whatever it might be. 
All right. Okay. I think the first order of business. Yeah. Is to do this. Oh my God. There's a lot to go through here. Right. First things first. Let's get the flag. Okay. Use flag. Boom. Okay, nice. What else we got? New PGP, I'm gonna ignore for now. Would have flagged like in Limpies if there was a, an actual private key there. Um, I think this is just a bunch of defaults. I'm gonna not look at it for now. Um, same sort of thing with Snap. Like if you install anything with Snap, you're gonna have XD. Is it Docker or can just naked LXD? Hmm. Yeah, we don't have a. Oops. We don't have um, membership of the LXD group. So we can't mess with that. Going down the list, dot le less, dot less history. Ever seen a less history file before? Less dot git config. Okay, we grabbed that before. So this is, so it looks like Cody, the git user, is logging in as this SVC account, local user account. Full checkup dot sh1. Oh. 10, 10, 14, 39. Okay. Let's get t.py. Oh, I think we're finding some uh, remnants of another player on the box. This is exploit code. So, good to know. <laughs> um,. My school history is dev null, cache we don't really care about, that null, dev null, cd dot local. Um, hmm, yeah, don't worry about that. And dot profile, we don't really care about. Yeah, it's just vanilla version. Okay, where do we go next? I really want to. Um. I mean, let's think about it, right? Like we've got user, which is this SVC account. Um, so now we're just purely thinking about Privesk. Um, I still think we should be poking around in the uh, .git directory. Um, I have looked at tools before that will try and yeah retrieve the contents. Git rob. Hmm. Get cracking. We do have get cracking installed. Hmm. 
At least I thought we did. Yeah, there it is. Brain starting to fail, making silly mistakes. Do we want to be bothered packaging all that up there? I don't know. Doesn't even look like it's launching. There we go. Yeah, sod it. Let's, um, it's too, too good to pass up. Um. Oh. Dancing squid there. Looks very happy. Okay. So what we're going to do is go into... We had two dot .git directories were identified. So... One was user uh, bar dub 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 app. So we'll do zip star. Uh, no, we're going to call it uh, app dot zip star. Hmm, seventy. Hmm. Uh oh. It's not git config, it's. Oh no. Screwed up my terminal! Oh no! Um. Oh dang it. So can we do STTY reset? STTY. Or echo. Oh, dang. I don't want to really do all this again. But looks like we will. Okay. Kill that. I think we can uh, just go with a basic shell. So let's do net. Uh, let's do bash netcat mblp one three seven. Then we're gonna run our exploit. Then we're gonna go into dot git. On view. Yes. So, um, in case it's not clear what's happened here, <clears throat> Mr. Cody has uh, configured this repo and he set up this remote origin, which is the Git T server, and he put his username and password into the uh, actual repository URL and so that way he doesn't have to type his, his username and password in every time he does a push or pull uh, from this server so what that does is gives us potentially some credentials to work with or well, Cody So let's go back to sign in. 
Let's do Cody. Try this password. And we're in. Nice. Right, just gonna do a quick uh, browse through this. So it looks like Cody's only got access to one repo. Is he an admin? Two-factor, naughty Cody, hard-coded credentials, naughty, naughty. Uh, no keys. And just this one repo, which we can see because it's here. <laughs> this is it. This is the repo, but now we can see it on... Um, checked in to git t itself so just one branch one commit that's what we saw um index.html so that was just one check in one commit with the initial code which we've already been able to look at because it's on deployed on the server at the moment um So what can we do? Oh, maybe the SVC service account uses this password. The same as his Git T password. Pseudo minus L. Ah. Oh. Yes, Cody, glorious. So Cody uses the same password for the SVC service account. Same password as Cody's Git user is down here. So <clears throat> now that we have the password, because before we couldn't do anything with passwords. Oh, sorry, we couldn't do anything with sudo because we didn't have, uh, it wasn't passwordless. You needed the actual user's account and because we came in through reverse shell, we didn't have the password, but now we've got the password. Brilliant. So let's run this script and see what it does. Oh, SVC may run the following. Oh, it's got to have the wildcard at the end. Aha. Okay. Let me just clean things up a bit so we can. Just keep that there in case. So this script, opt scripts, system check, oh, dot pi. No, so we can't view the script, but we can uh, run it as root. So we can't actually see what it does, like at a code level. Just gonna grab this. Okay, I think we're well into Privesk at this point. And SVC user, sudo, etc. Yep. Okay. So we Pretty bad. Uh, 
we run this, we get Docker PS. Let's just copy this usage so I don't have to keep looking at it. Docker inspect full checkup. All of the permissions are the same. There is a Git directory, so if I had to guess that this is going to be checked into Git T, but we don't have access to it. So let's just, oops, let's just try some of these commands. Uh, Docker PS. So there's two containers running. Git is on 3000, and then MySQL is on 3306. I would uh, hypothesize that MySQL is a requirement for Git T. Uh, okay, the containers are up and running. Simple labels, Git T and MySQL DB. Let's grab that. another argument format container name docker inspect format format ah output So, let's just say JSON, JSON. So what I did there is there's the standard Docker inspect command. And this particular script, um, systemcheckup.py, this wrapper for Docker inspect. Um, so let's just do the git t container. Container name. Container name or container ID. Docker inspect JSON. <clears throat> Maybe if we just run it with only one argument. Docker inspect format container name. Okay, <clears throat> let's try it in single quotes. Alright, we'll come back to that. Try the third one. Full checkup. Something went wrong. Fabulous. So, if I had to guess, this 
systemcheckup.py has a vulnerability that we're meant to exploit because it's running as root. Um, it has a potential vulnerability. Shouldn't use that mindset. Oh, this is the path they want us to go down. Should use the uh, investigative and researcher mindset. But this is looking like our best lead at the moment. Um, so <clears throat> what I'm thinking is that when we do something like, oops. When we do this. Nope, that one. Uh, what was it? Docker PS is that much like the vulnerability in the Python application is that there is a eval um, going on. That there is an eval call within Python in this script, which is not sanitized, right? Um, so what we want to do is potentially build a payload um, <clears throat> now it can't be docker ps because it doesn't accept any arguments full checkup it seems like is broken and doesn't doesn't take any arguments just returns something went wrong and docker inspect seems to be kind of like half broken docker inspect where it doesn't really honor this format or container name so i'm just going to grab this for brevity's sake Mm, text and then the gipty container so it echoes text back out to us which is interesting so let's try to build some payloads uh, but let's not reinvent the wheel let's look up Python um, I don't know if it's necessarily eval um, it could be another function like os.system which is forking a, a process um, so let's just look for Python command injection payload Unix, Windows. Yeah, these are more command injection through get host parameters. Mm. I mean, this is not necessarily a web app. We can just get a little bit dizzy and try something. I don't know. Hmm. 
Yeah. Oh! Oh my god, that worked. <laughs> Holy crap. I honestly did not think that would work. Uh, it drives me crazy. In this window, it's Control Shift C. In this window, it's Control C. And I just cannot build the muscle memory. Keep swapping between them. Oh, it's running as SVC. Oh, of course, because the first pseudo command finishes and then it runs the second. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. False alarm. Let's get a little bit more specific. Started there for a second. So it's echoing the literal string back. Okay. Most of the time we need to bypass another expression to execute our desired command. Yes. That is what I'm trying to do. So let's try. Okay, first of all, let's change this to ID. So we're a little bit more validated. Um, let's just go down the list. So it'd be a still checking for that second argument. All right, new no. curly brace. brace with a hash. Y dot spawn bin bash. It would really be good to have man recall and, and everything else here. And three minus C import PTY PTY dot spawn 
bin bash. Okay. CSTY raw here. E. Export shell equals bash. Export term equals x term 256. Color. CTY raw echo. Uh, okay, how's that looking? Yes, much better. Okay, we will have to re authenticate the sudo. So let's just fire that in there and we will need to grab our credentials for this user down here It's always checking the number of arguments. Still want to see if this thing actually works, right? So it just echoes that back. Um I mean, we can try one of these Docker filters, like... likes the syntax okay so maybe it's not the <clears throat> format that we should be uh, should be trying to but the container name itself. No such object. Okay, better. Throwing an error. Oh no, that's docker inspect. Throwing that error. Like if I did known existent I would get that same error which is coming from yeah which is coming from docker inspect so that's not a injection or breakout so what I'm gonna do is systematically go through these payloads so we got one two three four But if I was to do these unquoted on the command line, maybe I should be using double quotes. I don't know.
Hmm, I see, this is roughly what I think is happening. All right, let's try some. Let's try some long shots. Let's try this payload. Not evaluated. Uh, open brace. Come up. Nope. Single quote. Open brace, comma. Oh, interestingly, the single quote got stripped. Oh, and don't tell me that. Yeah. Goodness me. These are not actual single quotes. I don't know the uh, correct term for them, but they're quotes in opposite directions. Oh my god. the beginning. Okay. a big problem with copying and pasting from the web is that the wrong character is there. Now this assumes that this code is being evaluated or executed so we still need to try this with a
Are we looking at the right option? Well, the other, the other way we could do this is to try and run an actual command rather than run Python code itself. And so that would be kind of the same. Looks like nothing is getting escaped. is one of these three. Arc one, arc two. Ooh. Okay. Maybe, just maybe. We got a relative path issue here. I don't know. Um, so let's do opt scripts. And we can assume that. Ports is kind of inspect, full checkup is full checkup, system checkup, hmm, it's hard to know which action maps to which particular script, what I'm thinking is a relative path uh, inclusion, where if we have a well, let's just create them all right. So, echo. Let's just do dim. Ah, no, that's pretty good. Dim bash. Nice end. Um, ID. Into check for stuff. I don't have to PY. Okay. Let's think about this. So we're running system checkup. Still flask.sh. So full checkup is a shell script. Install flask doesn't really match to one of these actions. Check ports might be PS or it might be inspect, but it's not a good relationship. Like it's not a clear one-to-one. -one. So let's do echo 
bin bash minus a current return. Uh, ID to full checkup dot sh. Oh, and now my shell's busted again. Boy, oh boy. Um, where are we? NC NVLP one two seven. Okay, can we just SSH? Um, bus uh, searcher HTB. Yes. Oh, thank God. Okay. No more grappling with that. Um, Bye-bye. So, let's go to temp. Let's vim... Oh, okay, let's look at the file name again. Opt scripts. Vim. Full checkup.sh bin hash bang bin bash id chmod full chmod plus x full checkup.sh okay fine now let's do this Full checkup. Then we need the password. Oh, we got it. So, if we run this from, say, our home directory, it will run the script in opt scripts full checkup because that is relative to that. And if I had to guess, this full checkup script just simply says something went wrong. But if we have a script with the same name in our local directory, our working directory, we can see that we control that script and it's executed as root. So now let's get a root shell going. Um, nope, we want to do end tests. Uh, no, rev shells. So I can never remember. Linux. That'll do. 10, 10, 14, 30. Okay. Make it port 1337. Then we will go and put this in our substituted full checkup.sh. And then we will set up a listener. And with any luck, we'll get a shell as root. No! Something went wrong. Full checkup. 
repeatable bit rate. Hey, there we go. Hi, D. Oops. Hi, D. Working directory. Let's go to slash root. And let's get the root flag. Wonderful. Oh, man. I really enjoyed that. That was cool. No. Oh. oh, all good. I'll get the flag anyway. So, recap. One hour, 41 minutes. Not bad. Not bad. Amazing, but not bad. So we first got a foothold via a vulnerability, a published CV in search or 240. We were able to, um, we were able to find a beautifully published uh, bash script that exploited this. Basically, it was unsanitized input being passed to eval, uh, which let us, you know, basically load up a um, payload that gave us a reverse shell. We then did a lot of digging around. We found git t, um, and git t was a bit of a dead end, except for the fact that, I mean. We got the credentials for the SVC user because they use the same user they use the same password in Git as they did on the Linux host itself. So we were able to, you know, take advantage of that password reuse, which enabled us to run sudo, which we couldn't do on the reverse shell. And that means that once we were able to um see what was available via sudo this random system administration um, shell script or a bunch of python scripts that were all chained together um, suffered from a relative path inclusion uh, bug actually what would have been interesting would be to uh, i should have done it before where i logged out of the root shell but i was just going to say go and have a look at the actual um, code for the checkup script and everything else cool um yeah and then that gave us root obviously because we could execute via sudo in the root context wow i really enjoyed that so it was a lot of fun if you stuck around for all one hour and 43 minutes of this thank you very much have a great morning afternoon evening or night time whatever time it is for you and i'll see you in the next video Bye bye